Greetings from just off Orwell Lane. As we spin things back up in preparation for more of the Shadow Radio Show, given the Halloween season, I thought we'd warm things up with a bit of something truly terrifying. Lights Out was a radio show that predated the golden age of radio's stalwarts of suspense and inner sanctum. Originally created in the fall of 1933 by Willis Cooper for NBC, it was intended to be a, quote, midnight mystery serial to catch the attention of the listeners at the witching hour, unquote. Rather early on, the serialized concept was dropped for more of an anthology, and thus the legend was born. Willis ran the series, writing the majority of the scripts until 1936, when another Chicagoan, the legendary Arch Olber took over. Arch would carry the series for the next nigh on a decade, familiar to listeners of The Shadow for the episodes he penned that stand far apart as unique and deeply creepy. By the mid-1940s, however, Lights Out had fallen on harder times, and three separate attempts were made to reboot it. The episode I've chosen to highlight for tonight, from July 16th of 1947, is The Menacing Death Robbery, starring none other than Boris Karloff himself, working from a script penned by the previously mentioned Willis Cooper. Loreen Tuttle, in an originally uncredited role, is truly terrifying in his performance. It is worth noting that Eversharp, the sponsor of this third revival, was taken aback, not just by the nature of the stories, but the content themselves, and canceled their sponsorship after only three episodes into the run. Death Robbery itself is a wonderful little tale about a scientist with his wife, Ruth, portrayed by the previously mentioned Miss Tuttle, having discovered how to conquer death. Turn down the lights and try to transport yourself back to that evening in 1947 when only the soft glow of the family Filco would illuminate the living room as the stirring opening of Lights Out begins. Happy Halloween from all of us here just off Orwell Lane. <laughs> The Eversharp Schick Injector Razor, made by Eversharp, manufacturers of Eversharp Schick Injector Razors and Blades, and famous Eversharp Precision Writing Instruments. Hideous things come out of the darkness to prowl the tortured earth. Evil hands stretch forth to seize. Evil eyes are watching. Unholy voices whisper and quarrel in the fearful silence. Death stalks. Loathsome, horrible death. Dare you put out your lights and listen to Boris Karloff in a story of horror in the deepening darkness? Dare you listen to... Lights out! I'm glad you brought up the question of ethics, Ed. Sometimes I think science is too ethical. Stands in the way of research. Mm, I don't know, David. Take your work, for example. It's wonderful, but you have to be very cautious. I think working with monkeys is about as far as you should go right now. Oh, but, Ed, David is past that stage. Why not show Ed the one you worked on today, darling? If you'd like to see it, Ed, it's right in the lab. Yes, I would. I saw it last night after you injected the poison. I'll get it, David. Thank you, dear. It's in the second cage. Mm, Ruth's a wonderful girl, David. Must be a big help to you in your work. Don't know what I'd do without her. But if she ever gets too interested in pure science, (laughs) I'm going to to lock her out of the lab and just make her go back to being a wife. (laughs) How do you find time for a wife? Now, look here. All you practicing surgeons think the research man is a machine. Not me, Ed. Ruth means more to me than all the discoveries I might make. Her happiness is all I live and work for. Well, I can't say that I blame you. She's a very charming person. Ah, Here he is. Same one you saw last night, Ed. Stone dead. And there he is, just as healthy and alive as any other monkey. Why, it's amazing, David. 
Naturally, I followed all the experiments along this line, but you seem to have progressed much farther. David can't go any farther with animals. He's ready for the next step. And he can do it. Well, I'm all for research, David. But you have a moral obligation in this sort of thing. How do you know it'll work with human beings? Oh, you're a surgeon yourself, Ed. You know that human beings are animals just like all the subjects I've used. I know it'll work. Well, knowing it won't get you far with society. You'll have to submit proof. I know that. And I've tried every way I can think of to get a human being to demonstrate on. He's tried insane asylums, penitentiaries, everywhere. No one will listen to me. Well, in a way, you can't blame them. Even to me, with my training, the idea seems, well... Blasphemous. My dear Ed, you can't stop scientific progress because of a so-called moral concept. Besides, what could be less blasphemous than a triumph over death? <laughs> I'm sorry, but I can't see it that way. I wouldn't want to try it on me. When I'm dead, I want to stay dead. Oh, that's foolish, Ed. Well, if I die first, I want David to use me for a subject. <laughs> Don't look so startled, Ed. She's always been my strongest supporter. But I'm not going to use her as a subject. I like her too well as a wife. <laughs> Still, it gives me the shivers to hear you talk that way, Ruth. Well, why? I've seen David's work grow to where the technique is perfect. Before long, his experiments will be recognized by the whole medical world. And if I can help him achieve that goal, I'm willing to do anything. Living or dead. I mean it. <laughs> said she wanted to do it, Ed, living or dead. David, you're surely not going to hold her to that. Not now. Of course I am. She meant it. But I called you over here tonight, Ed, because I need help. Don't tell me that. That I want you to help me bring Ruth's... To bring her here? That's exactly what I mean. David... Will you help me? Or must I bribe some stranger? David, why don't you give this thing up? It's, it's inhuman. Ed, if I succeed, I'll have Ruth back. Don't you see how much it means? Well, yes, if you're successful. Oh, I've no doubt about that. Look, I've got my laboratory record. 714 times I've performed the experiment on guinea pigs, rabbits, monkeys. 714 times it's been successful. Don't you see? But, David, this is no laboratory experiment. Ruth was your wife. She is my wife. The only woman I ever loved. That's why I want to bring her back here and start her breathing and living again. There's an ugly name for what you're asking me to do, David. I know. Grave robbery. But there's a better name for it, Ed. Death robbery. We'll rob old man death. Kick the door shut. Uh, on the operating table. I must say you are completely equipped. It's surgery, just as well as a lab. Everything we need is here. There. Well, it's done. Not yet. You mean you want me to stay? Ed, listen. Ever since Ruth... Well, I guess I've leaned on you for everything. I won't ask you to stay, but I do need you. Just a little longer. All right, David. I'll stay. Ruth will be the first to thank you when we succeed. David, I'll always doubt this until I see Ruth living, breathing, smiling again. It won't be long. Just a matter of 15 or 20 minutes. If nothing happens. What will you do if your operation doesn't work? Then you'll have just one more job to do as my friend. And that? To be to bury both of us. Oh, now look, David. If Ruth isn't alive again within a few minutes, I'll have lost her forever. And I'll have proved that my whole life's work is useless. I'll have reason enough to use any of a dozen tricks that any good surgeon knows. End the whole business. Oh, but don't look so horrified, Ed. We won't fail. Let's begin. I should remind you once more, David, 
that you're usurping powers that belong to God Almighty. I like to think that Providence has wisely held back the knowledge of things like this until we knew how to use them. And I know how. Hand me that large beaker. All right. I'm not going to back out on you, David. What shall I do? Do? You'll work as you haven't worked in surgery before. Thank heavens I've got your skill on my side. Now then, first strap the spigot manometer on her arm. I just happened to think of something. Keep moving. This is all a matter of timing. Yeah, but, David... Here are your instruments. I want the incision right here where I'm shaving the hair. Make a small incision just at the fontanelle while I prepare the solution. David, have you considered... Please work fast. But, Dave, what? She was embalmed, you know. Of course I know that. But something to replace the blood and counteract the fluid. It's ghastly. Finish the cut. I know what I'm doing. Well, that's all for the incision, but after all... It'll work nice. Now cut away the dura mater. Entirely? Leave the brain exposed? Yes, yes, I'll fix that. I've done it 700-odd times. Well, this is no guinea pig or monkey. Well, I hardly need reminding. Sorry. What's that? A compound I've synthesized myself. Well, what is it? I call it digamma paradiamine. Oh, I know that isn't chemically correct. It's as close as I can get to it. I knew that something like it must exist. It took three years to track it down. It took me that long to make the first drop of it. Well, you know what you're doing, all right? Yes, I do. Now, then, you're finished. Take the leads from that storage battery there and attach the positive to the silver plate on the shelf. Put that at her feet. I feel as if I were doing something unholy. Place the tip of the negative in the incision you made in the skull. Be sure the tip of the wire actually... actually penetrates the pyre mater. David... What if you bring her back? I will bring her back. But what if you bring her back and find she comes back without her soul? What? Her soul? Yes. You're a surgeon. You believe in a soul. Well, I hesitate to say there is no such thing. You've seen a good many deaths, haven't you? Have you ever seen any evidence that the soul escapes at death? Perhaps I couldn't recognize the evidence. Let's put it this way, then. If there is any soul, it either leaves the body or stays with it at death. Now, no reputable surgeon or physician has ever been able to report the slightest evidence of the soul having left the body. So the soul, if there is a soul, must stay with the body, a part of it. I'm ready now. You've finished. Everything set. Good. Close that switch then at the battery. Watch the meter and keep the current between plus and minus five of 150. The rear stat on the edge of the table. All right? All right. Now, I'm going to inject 10 cc's of adrenaline in the brachial artery. Adrenaline? Adrenaline and something else. There. But oh, she's beautiful, Ed. Yes. She was. She is. You'll see her in a few minutes, just as she was. I wonder what you'll have to tell us. Nothing. Death is only a transcendental sleep. Do you really believe that, dear? Oh, well, what's the difference? How's the current? Well, let's see. What? Well, let's jump to 180. Good. Bring it back to 150. That's the result of the injection. On a dead body? <laughs> let's say suspended animation. There are still a few things in surgery you don't know, aren't there? I never dreamed of a reaction like that. I'll show you more. Help me swing this lamp over here. But... Let the ammeter go. It'll hold steady for a minute now. But if I jump again... No, it won't. I've been all through this before. The reactions are exactly the same as the others. Well, this lamp... X-rays? No, it's a modification of the cathode ray. And just another of my developments. I call these a theta rays. Why do you call them that? Well, most rays are named for the first few letters in the Greek alphabet, alpha, beta, gamma, and so on. Well, that explains theta. Didn't you say a theta? Yes. But theta was called the letter of death by the ancient Greeks. Well, that's right. It was the first letter in the word thanatos. Death. Yeah, I see. A theta without death. <laughs> Maybe I was too sentimental. Maybe. At least human for once. Let's not argue. Here goes the ray. 
Now, quickly. The solution. Inject it? No, pump it. I built this pump especially for it. There's the pump switch, Ed. Here? Yeah. Turn it on and watch the air meter. Okay. It's jumping. How far? 155. Let it go. 160. 170. Hold it there. It'll stay there now. Listen carefully. Yes. As soon as I turn off the pump, I want spigma readings. But there won't be any blood pressure. Wait and see. Give me a reading each time I ask for it and take them carefully. Are you ready? Oh, this is fantastic. I'm ready. Okay. Reading. Systolic zero. Diastolic zero. That's all right. It will take a few seconds. Now. Forty. My God. Diastolic. Hurry. Zero. My orbit valve is still open. I'll turn off the ray. Reading. Forty-eight. Over forty-two. David. Not yet. Now the stopwatch. Seven seconds after I say go, I want the systolic. Now you have it? Right. Ready. Now, go. Sixty. Go. Just what it should be. Lord. Look at my hand. Well, I don't wonder. Ruth, darling, just a few more minutes. All right, Ed. Now the ray again. We'll know the answer very soon. The second act of Lights Out, starring Boris Karloff, will follow in just a moment. But now, listen to the sweetest shaving song ever written. Push, pull, click, click. Changes blades that quick. Push, pull, click, click. With the Eversharp Schick Injector Razor. Yes, it clicks for men everywhere. Because the Eversharp Schick Injector Razor is the world's one and only razor with the automatic blade changer. No blades to unwrap. Fingers never touch the blade. Just push, pull. Click, click. And a keen new blade is automatically locked in correct shaving position instantly. It clicks because the Eversharp Schick Injector Razor makes shaving 50% faster, 100% safer, 200% smoother. Just try the Eversharp Schick Injector Razor for one week. See for yourself the difference. It's a $1.75 value. Special now, only $1.25, complete with 20 blades. For the shave of your life, the rest of your life, switch to an Eversharp Schick Injector Razor. Get yours tomorrow. Push, pull, click, click. <laughs> Buy an Eversharp Schick. <laughs> How long do you use the ray this time, David? Not long. Give me a reading. 68. Over 67. Now. 70. Diastolic. 68. Now. David. 118. 76. Close. Now. 120. That's it. 80. The stethoscope. Quick. Here. Listen. Still 
sleep? Yes, almost a coma. She's all right otherwise. As far as I can tell, her respiration's normal, pulse just a tiny bit fast, and reflexes slow, but apparently all right. David, I... I feel I must apologize to you. Apologize? Why? Well, for doubting you, I suppose. <laughs> you learn to believe me. Very calm in the face of all this. Do you realize that you've performed a miracle? A miracle? I brought my wife back to me, as I promised her. It's... It's an unholy thing, but... But we've conquered death. Is that unholy? We have conquered death. May God forgive us. She'll only wait now. How long has she been asleep? Let me see. Eleven hours. Hasn't spoken at all? Not since that first scream, when she fell asleep. Have you given her anything? Just a few drops of brandy. Have you tried to wake her? No, but I think I'll try now. No, wait a minute before you do. Why? Well, I... I hate to keep harping on this business about a soul, David. I realize this is no place for a philosophic discussion. But I can't help wondering why Ruth screamed when she first came back to life. I think there's a logical explanation. After all, it must have been a physical shock. Well, that's true. It must also be true that there was a great mental shock involved. I think that's why she screamed. And I'm wondering whether there's been a permanent effect on her mind... Known as I prefer to think of it, her soul. Oh, you're simply borrowing trouble, Ed. I've never seen any sign of permanent damage in my other experiments. Don't forget that Ruth was a human being. Well, there's only one way to find out. I'm going to wake her. You're, you're not afraid? Afraid? Of what? Ruth. Ruth. Wake up, darling. Ruth, dear, it's David speaking. Wake up, dearest. Ruth. Ruth. Look out. Oh, darling. No wonder it scared a poor girl. Ruth, it's, it's David, dear. I kept my promise and you're alive again. Oh, you're all right, honey. It's David, you're... You're... Ruth! Ruth! David! David, what's the matter? Ruth! God is her mind! No, David. Her soul. David... You'd better go out for a little exercise now. I'll stay here with her. I'll stay while you go out and walk around a bit. You've been there with her since 8 o'clock last night without any letter. Go on, I'll stay. Ed. I know, old boy. I'd give anything myself if we could undo what we've done, but... Ed, what could I do? Well, there may be something. Let's try an experiment when she wakes up again. What kind of an experiment? Well, let's see if we can talk to her, get her to say anything. If we can get a flicker of intelligence, maybe we can teach her, build up from a small fragment... Maybe it might work. I'm going to wake her up and try it. Well, not now. Why don't you take a walk? Relax a little. And get something to eat while you're out. Eat? I can't eat. I'm going to wake her. Ruth. Ruth. David. Why not let her sleep? She's waking up now. Ruth. Hello, Ruth. Are you waking up? Poor child. Poor child. There. She repeats after me. A little. Maybe it will work, Ed. Ruth. Ruth. David. Ruth. It works. Seems to. Ruth, say I want a glass of water. Seems to. <laughs> I want a glass of water. water. It's too long for a... Ruth. Say, Ruth. Ruth. Loves... David. David. <laughs> Ruth loves David. Ruth loves David. Ruth loves David. Ruth loves David. <laughs> Ruth loves David. <laughs> it's working, Ed, maybe. But what is she thinking? I don't know. No, no. <laughs> Ruth, stop it. Stop it. Wait a minute, old man. Ruth loves David. Too much for you, tired as you are. Go on, I'll take a little walk and I'll work with her for a while. Stop. Your nerves won't take Stop. much of this. Oh, I guess Stop. you're right, Ed. I can't Ruth think anymore. Loves I'll be right David. there. Fine, fine. Uh -huh. I'll take good care of her and see what I can find out. Be patient. Uh -huh. Don't worry. I will. And you get something to eat while you're out. All right, I'll try. Poor guy, the 
this is really rough on him. Rough on him. <laughs> Ruth. Oh, Ruth. We're kidding ourselves. There's nothing there. She's a parrot. Parrot. <laughs> oh, never mind, Ruth. Ruth, put on that scalpel. Scalpel. <laughs> You'll hurt yourself. Ruth, stay away. <laughs> you devil, put it down. Think of David. <laughs> Sake, what happened? Ruth. Scalpel. I'll get something and fix you right up. Wait. No use. Now look. Doctor. Artery. No hope. Ed. All right, Doctor. Your diagnosis is correct. A minute or two left. Ruth's hiding. Watch out. An old, old soul. She'll kill you, too. What have I done, Ed? Everything I've done is wrong. Oh, wonderful technique, Doctor. Congratulations. What about soul? Ed. Ed. Ruth. She's somewhere in the house. What if she gets out with a scalpel in her hands? There's been enough damage. Ruth! Ruth! Basement. I'd better take a gun. busy in the lab. No. No, there's nothing new. Just an experiment. No. Like so many experiments, it, it just didn't work out. Sharp Shake has just presented Boris Karloff in the first of the new series of mystery and terror stories, Lights Out. In just a moment, we'll tell you about next week's story. But first, no matter what kind of razor you use now, here's a challenge. There's a better, easier, faster way to shave. Eversharp Shake Injector Razor has banished forever 90% of the nuisance that makes shaving such a chore. Ends nuisance number one, no time wasted. Eversharp Schick Injector Razor has been proved at least 50% faster. Ends nuisance number two, it's safer. Patented guard bar prevents skin irritation, even under nose. Eversharp Schick shaves clean and smooth without skin irritation. Ends nuisance number three, nothing to take apart or put together. World's easiest razor to clean. Just rinse, shake, put away. 
Ends nuisance number four. No blades to unwrap. Fingers never touch the blade. Just push-pull, click-click. Because Eversharp Schick's the world's one and only razor with the automatic blade changer that locks a keen new blade, the world's sharpest blade, in correct shaving position instantly. Yes, it's 50% faster, 100% safer, 200% smoother. So, for the world's quickest, easiest, cleanest shave, change to Eversharp Schick Injector Razor. It's a $1.75 value, but special now for only $1.25, complete with 20 blades. Buy yours tomorrow. Next week, Lights Out will bring you a story about the undead, the vampires who are doomed to wander alone through all eternity, seeking the blood of innocent ones. Be sure to listen next Wednesday night at this same time. Lights Out is produced and directed by Bill Lawrence. The script is by Paul Pierce and Willis Cooper. This is Ken Nile speaking for Eversharp, manufacturers of Eversharp chicken injector razors and blades, and famous Eversharp precision writing instruments. For birthdays, weddings, anniversaries, and business gifts, remember the best gift of all is an Eversharp CA pen. Buy yours tomorrow during the sensational Eversharp CA pen sale. Buy now and save as much as 60%. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.